he looked over and he saw Colleen Dane leaning over the railing. He then turned away, looking at the Gulf of Mexico. And the next, for 10 or 15 seconds, and the next time he looked back, Chris was hanging on for dear life to his wife. So that 10, 15 seconds was what this trial was about. And what, what happened, happened in the span, span of 10 to 15, 15 seconds could land this man in jail for up to 15 years. Welcome, Welcome back, back to Both Sides. I'm Vinny Politan. And I'm Kimberly, Kimberly Gilfoyle Newsom. Christopher, Christopher Dame is charged with manslaughter for the death of his wife. He is alleged to have pushed her off a fifth floor balcony, but his defense maintains he tried to save his wife when she went over the railing on her own. Joining us now is a man who knows a little something about the defense in this case. Aaron O'Brien is one of Christopher Dame's attorneys. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Vinny. Uh, first, uh, first question, question I have, I mean, this case just changed so dramatically when that eyewitness account seemed to turn around 180 degrees. Uh, uh, give us, tell, tell us what happened, happened there. What was the original count, and then how did, how did everything, everything seem to change? change? Well, the original statement was made to the police, um, and it was a little more vague than, than uh, it wasn't terribly accurate, but later, when we had a chance, Mr. Neal and myself took his deposition, uh, and Mr. Neal did a super job of asking the witness exactly what he saw and what he did not see. And as you can see from some of the photographs, there's a concrete wall between the two rooms. And this witness, Mr. Bean, testified that he could not see and did not see uh, Mr. Dame actually set Colleen Dame in motion. The only thing he saw was him holding on for dear life. So there's a portion that he did not see that is critical to the case. Aaron, Kimberly here. What do you really think happened? There's so much speculation in terms of, you know, was this an accident? Was she getting sick or vomiting and leaning over the railing, lost her balance, and then her husband tried to save her? Or was this something that you believe was an intentional suicidal act on the part of Colleen Dame, obviously a woman with a lot of uh, history of mental problems and distress? Well, no. We, we certainly do not feel that... Um, that she, she was, was trying, trying to commit, commit suicide, suicide that, that night. night. However, um, she, she may have uh, been feigning suicide, suicide or she may have been disoriented and falling. Um, we, we simply, simply don't, don't know what happened on the balcony. It, it was, was very fuzzy, fuzzy and, um, um, and, and so, but, but certainly, certainly we don't tolerate in criminal courts conjecture and speculation and guessing. And guessing. That's, that's, we, we, we need evidence. And, and they didn't bring us evidence of, of what happened on the balcony. And, and but, but we're not, not saying then, though, that, that Colleen was committing suicide for certain. certain. Okay, okay, well, there's a lot of plausible explanations. The one I have a little bit of difficulty with is that she was trying to get back to the beach. That, to me, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't keep a straight face when I hear that one because it just seems to me to be so implausible that that's the way you return to the beach. I get it. She's drunk, disoriented, etc. They switch rooms. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Was there anything that uh, you learned, you know, during the course of this trial that made you think that that was really a feasible um, explanation? Well, I think that might have been just a bit of hyperbole. The point being was that she was confused and disoriented, and everything that Christopher Dame said was consistent with the state's own evidence. For example, when he said that her prior suicide attempts, the events of the day, the birthday party, we even had a receipt in evidence, uh, listing a birthday cake, etc., uh, the fact that she was on these drugs and booze and pills, and that he had tried to prevent her from going over the railing earlier that very night, and there was a photograph in evidence of the bed being a slightly askew, which would have supported that statement he made. Now, speaking of the words of Christopher Dame, uh, we listened yesterday to his audio taped interview that was done by police, and in there, it, it sounded like he was under the influence at the time or intoxicated at the time of giving that statement. Um, how do you think that tape played? Uh, did you feel that it helped your case, or did you feel it was something that, uh, you know, took a little bite out of your case? Oh, we, oh, we certainly, certainly think, think it helped, helped our case. case. Again, everything that Christopher said and did was consistent with an absolutely innocent man. Uh, he immediately, after the fall, uh, shouted, call 911. He ran down the stairs as soon as he could. He was down by the body uh, in tears, hysterical, and, and saying, I love you, please be okay. And so that statement, we think, really captured the essence of this man being innocent. 
Aaron, you know, what I found to be really interesting and the most credible point really for the defense was that there was the consistency, the corroboration from what the eyewitness said and what your client said immediately after this incident when he was questioned. Because on page four of the transcript, um, he is asked, okay, you had hold of her what? And he answers, ankles. And that's before the interviewer, the detective, ever mentions that an eyewitness actually saw him holding his wife by the ankle. So that, to me, seemed to be very compelling. When you learned of this fact and this you know, order in terms of the information coming out, did you find that to be compelling as well? Oh, very much so, Kimberly. And, and so when we learned of that, then the, the, the investigator said to him, well, we have a witness almost in a confrontational tone. And, and Chris immediately said, good. He, he was happy to hear that. In fact, he said, well, then, great. This man can testify for me then. Okay. Aaron, at what point did you realize that the children were going to be in your corner, that the children uh, were going to be a big part of your case? Well, we knew right from the start. Um, and we, we started the defense case from the very beginning. We, we learned of Colleen's you know, troubled past, and the, the children certainly ended up being uh, very excellent witnesses for us. Um, and uh, her friends and her family, her, the doctors and the EMTs all told us about uh, her condition. Um, but, but, but certainly, certainly they were very helpful, helpful from the, right from the get-go. Aaron, was there anybody that you were surprised that maybe wasn't initially or during the whole proceeding supportive of your client, a friend, or anyone who really blamed him? Or was everyone pretty much on his side thinking that he wasn't capable of doing something like this to his wife and that it really was an issue of a woman that was troubled with so many, plagued by so many problems, uh, mental distress, issues, mental health issues, alcoholism. I mean, it sounds like she really needed to get into some professional help, some reason. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that didn't happen, but uh, uh, no, actually, Kimberly, there were some folks uh, on, on Colleen's side of the family who were not terribly pleased with Christopher Dane uh, and made that apparent, but, but fortunately, by the end of the trial, we think even their opinion of Chris had changed, so we, we were thinking that they had heard all this evidence, and maybe they hadn't heard it before. It was the first time that everything got brought uh, before the jury, before the public. All right, Aaron O'Brien, attorney for Christopher Dame. Thank you so much for joining us today and giving us some, some insight into the defense in this case. And uh, thanks again. The victim in this case, Colleen Dame, had suffered an injury when a case of Gatorade fell on her back and caused her great pain. Well, on the stand now is a doctor who treated Colleen Dame for this neck and back pain. Let's go back into the court. All right. Do you have or did you have a patient by the name of Colleen Dame? I do. And can you tell me what you were treating Colleen Dame for initially when you first took her on as a patient? Uh, she, she came, came to me with, with uh, 